making me spend enough time with this location title to realize that flipping it spells Moxow. Also, I know we're not expecting a 100% true adaptation of the Secret Invasion run, but renaming Russia to present day is an interesting creative liberty. Contributing to the growing e-waste problem by throwing your burner phone on the ground instead of burning it. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Moving your gun from your sock to your pants so, as the audience, we know you have a gun and that we might get to see you shoot yourself in the ass. Imagine a world. Without narration? Every day. Operation Treadstone? Are we sending the wrong show or is Disney secretly purchased Universal so they can make a crossover with the Bourne universe? Yes, that's a joke, but why does it feel like it might not be? Episode goes with the standard spy mood board cliche. Also, terror in Munich. Mass shooting. Motive. Unnecessary post-excite notement. That's precisely what they want you to think. Trying to convince someone that you aren't a conspiracy nut by using the go-to slogan, every conspiracy nut is used since November 22nd, 1963. Or is that what Marvel wants us to think? So you, you think the same people are behind all of this? Not people. Scrolls. Hey, scrolls can be people too. Isn't that the point? Scrolls could be anybody, anywhere, at any time. So, in theory, this would be a society where, as a person, you could present any way in which you would like, with no fear of persecution and no one giving a shit. Are we sure we don't want the scrolls in charge? I need to give them something more than just theories. I need evidence. And the super secret location of the evidence is... Behind this desk? Also, Beric, done with your shit, Darian, does indeed have some very compelling evidence. But you'd be forgiven for thinking he's a conspiracy-seeking lunatic considering he opened with the wild conspiracy shit instead of the hard evidence <laughs> Choking your Bilbo. Ross rolls down the stairs and into one of the most incomprehensible action shots I've ever seen. Episode will now showcase the motion-activated lighting in the stairwell for all of the overly dramatic some time. Look ya! Halos. Trusting that the shapeshifter who shifted shape into the shapeshifter you know is the known to be trustworthy shapeshifter. He was one of you. What do you mean, one of you? Also now begins the inevitable no one is who you think they are, but maybe they are, but maybe who the f knows hook of the show. Meaning I'll have to devote 75% of my brain power to guessing, suspecting, and generally pondering who is or isn't a scroll instead of simply enjoying the show. Yes, I could utilize the other 25% for show enjoyment, but you see it's already been partitioned for puns and archer references. He's one of them. What do you mean, one of them? Apparently these opening credits were designed by an AI program instead of a human. So should we send it for robbing an artist of meaningful work in a world where they're already underpaid and underappreciated? Or do we remove a sin for being on brand for the theme of the series and embracing the inevitability of new technologies? Or do we look a distraction? People who think the whole please remain in your seats until the seatbelt sign has been turned off thing doesn't apply to them. Also, it's one thing to be up in the ass of AI, it's another thing to be up in the ass of Spielberg's AI artificial intelligence. I got kicked off the council, pushed into exile. Talos is bringing Nick up to speed on some pretty radical developments about the scrolls on Earth, and as nice as this exposition is for us, why doesn't Fury already know this sh he hasn't been in a cave with a box of scraps. He's been working on an orbital weapon system. They could have updated him at any point, but decided to wait until they had exactly f all time to save the day. Ravik is now the newest member of the Scroll Council. I present to you the newest product from Sinsung, the Hollow's Position Pad. Where is it? Oddly timed biology lessons. Scrolls are immune to radioactivity. Of course they are. Russia has the most abandoned nuclear plants on Earth. Of course they do. These plants, they're not on the books. Of course they aren't. Also, if that's true, what was the point of all these little radioactive graphics on your map? Just for funsies? Nearly left saber. Looks like in this round we have James Rhodes and Dermot Mulroney, but unfortunately there's only enough time for them to be baffled by the idea that Nick Fury might have had some chores to do. So tune in next week to maybe or maybe not find out on Who is the Scroll? Agent Fury is building out the most complex aerospace defense system in the history of mankind. Can't just leave. Right? I mean, that's super weird, isn't it? You'd think there'd be steps in place to make sure Nick do what I want Fury couldn't leave the station without prior approval or without setting off all the alarms. You sure would think that, wouldn't you, Mr. President? Let's see, large black man, Moscow. Playing guess who with the British. Fury planning a bug is so not surprising that we'll wonder why they didn't search him more thoroughly and why they don't immediately sweep the room after he's gone. I think Thanos' snap changed you, taught you that no matter how hard you fight for what's right, there's always someone stronger to undermine you. What the f*** 
is this? Is she trying to incept him? I'm sure this guy was suddenly turned to dust and then resurrected five years later, but people change for a lot of reasons, and they don't need you speculating on the nature of their trauma. I let your man take me so I could get to you. Title of my sex tape? In case you confuse it with 310 made-up units of measurement southwest of Moscow. Take your natural form. But make sure you do so behind your hat. As She-Hulk rightfully pointed out, this transformation sh ain't cheap, and we're not looking to overwork the AI workforce into a rebellion. Yet. Welcome to New Skrullovs. You've arrived just in time to be my expositional walk-and-talk guinea pig, so we can tell the audience what a Skrullos is. Also, assuming that an alien species would show the same lack of creativity as the Europeans who took Manahata and named it New Amsterdam, and the Europeans who took New Amsterdam and named it New York, and the Europeans who took New York and named it New Orange, and you get the point. Furthermore, also Lee, how did she know someone was coming? The guards certainly didn't have time to message her. Did she just happen to be driving past the entrance? I mean, that seems super weird because there's f all down here other than exposition. When's the last time you ate? Beto. Here, have this unwrapped produce that I keep in the glove compartment. Also, why are we speaking English right now instead of a scroll language? We grow only scroll produce here. Drink scroll wine, wear scroll skins. Okay, now you're just naming things and putting scroll in front of it. Also, you wear scroll skins? I mean, I guess I do wear human skins, but I don't like this phrasing. I suppose this is scroll soccer. That's right, I called it soccer. America! The warriors keep our human form. The longer we attach to our shells, the less likely we can be identified by humans and scrolls alike. Plus, the show spent a sh ton of money getting Amelia Clark to play me, and it'd be a shame if we hit her in prosthetics for the whole season. What's behind there? Victory. The boat? What the hell do the scrolls want with the oldest serving naval vessel in the world, commissioned in 1758, complete with 104 guns? Don't get me wrong, I'd love to see some pirate scrolls, but how the hell did they get it from Portsmouth, England, all the way to... Oh, she's being metaphorically ambiguous, isn't she? Fine, but that's much less fun than my thing. Okay, these MI6 assholes should have found this for no other reason than it's visibly changing colors. I'm considered good-looking amongst my kind, babe. Well, I know a bunch of good-looking scroll. You ain't one. Okay. Of. I'm glad these two besties are picking up where they left off, but I'm not glad the story that wants me to think the scroll terrorist threat is urgent is also making time for this. She will annihilate any and everyone who's ever even heard the name Gravik. Being the living proof that what you just said was over-exaggerated BS. You come with me. We don't even see him look in a direction, let alone her direction. Yet Gaia correctly guesses which you he was talking to. Is there some kind of unexplained tension between these two? Or does this guy just not like it when people slam car doors? A lot of what is going on here could have been cleared up if they just gave this guy a scroll apple. Nicholas Joseph Fury, you're conducting an unauthorized operation on foreign soil. Why are you not concealing your weapon in public? Oh, sh I got it. In Captain America the Winter Soldier, did we not see this man tunnel his way out of a flipped car through sheet metal, asphalt, concrete, and whatever else is beneath the roadway? All in a few seconds? But he's flummoxed by a chained door? Not bad for a 136-year-old. Well, you know, not even 40 in human years. I haven't even gone on my midlife crisis shopping spree yet. What you get for yours? The Avengers. Glad to see fun banter took precedence over quietly infiltrating the shop of a bomb builder. Got eyes on a possible person of interest. No, you f***ing don't. There's like a second and a half window of time where it was possible for you to have caught sight of Fomilia here, and you just so happen to be looking the right way. Not to mention the nonsense that you were able to recognize her at this distance. That chair belonged to Louis XV. It's priceless. Uh, everything is priceless till it gets blown to bits in a hail of bullets. No, everything is not priceless. The Italian combo from the deli down the street is $8.99 before the bullets. We're going to go ahead and call that a lie. Everybody gets one. Nobody gets two. What kind of saying is that? Nobody gets to lie twice? Nobody? How is there anyone left in the MCU? What about the heroes that have to lie about their identity? What about Talos, the man you're working with that is standing in this room and has to lie every day? I will never, ever, ever forgive hyperbolic threats. Well, I guess it isn't a Marvel property unless I've had at least one bout of nausea induced by 17 trillion cuts a second. Imagine getting an AI to create your opening credits, but not taking the time to also ask them, how do I make my action scenes less vomity? I said no. This will work well in the service of building tension between these two, but you could have shot him in the kneecaps, Nick. He still has the information you need. Where did you Where did you come from? Or at least how in the TV time warp did you get here so fast? 
This is not what your mother would have wanted. Damn it. I thought Gaia got into this position on her merit, but turns out she's a Nepo baby. Her last words? Fine, Gaia. She's dead. And she didn't know her mother was dead either. I guess I'm connecting with these characters through their pain, but I vaguely remember sitting down to watch a suspense thriller, not a family drama. You know that I'll protect you. You can't protect anyone. Gaia, I know. He's letting her go? Okay, that's his daughter, but she has a bomb. I know that World War III eventually leads to the Vulcans arriving, the formation of Starfleet in a utopian future, but damn it, he shouldn't know that. But bon. Fury orders a pint here, but when we see them at the table, he's drinking a bottle, which is absolutely not a pint. And the MCU golden days really are behind us, aren't they? Are you going to tell me why you abandoned Earth? Uh, build an out saber. Casual bar chats about... The most complex aerospace defense system in the history of mankind. Let's just say I had a crisis of faith. So why'd you come back? There's being cool under pressure, and then there's drinking and playing chess in a bar while you know that your enemy has radioactive bombs they intend to use. You're not ready for this, Fury. Can we please just pretend he's ready? The semi-retired hero being forced back to fight the good fight trope is getting so tired that it, ironically, should itself be retired until we're prepared to drag it back into action with a more original conceit. So check your footing, otherwise someone's gonna get hurt. She said ominously, as if having some kind of foreknowledge about the episode's climax. They arrived in the same car. Did they have to get out to have this chat? The invasion may be secret, but all these characters seem set on ensuring that nothing else is. A lot of backpacks in central Moscow. The guy has painted ours with infrared spray. You're only telling them this now? What if they hadn't brought the fancy glasses that we're seeing for the first time ever? We missed the pass. And you're surprised? You have three people covering this huge ass square at nothing more than ground level. Of course you f***ing missed it. Aren't they supposed to be the best spies in the US? Our reward for patiently letting this episode go through the motions of setting up this story is that we now get to watch these three badly chase a MacGuffin through a crowded square at the pace of a quick walk. Scrolls. I mean, kids. Also, this seems to be the same little girl Fury saw earlier. So does Gravik spend some of his off hours hanging out as a six-year-old with a Russian family? Graphic clearly doesn't care about Fury knowing that he's shapeshifting, but what about all the people on the other side of this stand that would clearly see this tiny girl turning into a middle-aged man? Look at this right here. Here's Gravik and watch this guy as he looks directly at him the entire damn time. He 100% saw this transformation and doesn't say sh Now we get some boom booms so we know how formidable an opponent Gravik is. It's like an itty bitty Thanos snap. <laughs> I'm sure the death of Agent Hill is supposed to make me believe that no one is safe, but at this point, I really don't know how I can believe that. Gamora came back. All the people that got blipped came back. Heck, Marvel denies it, but for a good time there, even Phil Coulson was back. This slow pan up doesn't have me as convinced as you think it does that this isn't a scroll, or that she's just in a coma and not even dead yet. Do you want ants? Because overcooking your steaks is exactly how you get ants. Never occurred to me they would be coming from above. Previously on Captain Marvel? Do we really need to know what part of London this is set in? Your American audience knows what London is. Unless Brixton plays into the plot, and it doesn't, then this is just wasted letters. And you know how we feel about wasting letters around here. We went looking for a home. Found nothing but violence. I'm not saying the scrolls have had it easy, but they only spent two years searching the entire universe for a new home. It took me longer than that to find myself after college. And I was right there the whole time. This man. Who is currently too busy starring in a Captain Morgan commercial to face you like a normal human. Carol Danvers and I will find you a new one. Kind of feel like if you're making this big a promise, then Carol Danvers should be with you. Or are you making the promise without her? Come on, Disney, you ponied up to D.H. Samuel L. Jackson again. Call in Brie Larson for a cameo, so this makes sense. Also, why aren't they sitting? Personally, I'm not volunteering for anything if you make me stand for a whole meeting. I'm an American! I'm an American! This sh is why other countries hate our tourists. You couldn't wait until you left the scene of the crime to transform? Using AI to create your opening titles instead of using AI to eliminate lengthy opening titles altogether. You mean like the aliens who wiped out half of all life on Earth a few years ago? Or the ones who nearly leveled all of New York City? This world is way too familiar with actual aliens for this winky joke to work. Well, me and my mama used to take the long 
train rides to Detroit. I like the scene of Nick Fury telling this story a lot. It's probably one of my favorite moments from his character. And while I'd love to remove a sin for it, I'm also frustrated it took us this long to humanize a character that's been in the MCU since 2010. Much like Black Widow, Fury needed his own project way before he finally got it. And the MCU is worse for it. Smell way too good to wait. My lack of self-restraint after buying a dozen Krispy Kreme somehow makes it into the episode. Have you lost your reptilian ass mind? That's Skrullist. Or reptilian assist. Or both. Better take two sins just in case. The host gets to set the terms of the visitation. Assuming you're the host of the entire world. There is not enough room or tolerance on this planet for another species. So I guess Nick Fury completely forgot about New Asgard then? They got a whole city when their world was destroyed, but Earth can't handle scrolls because of hate or some sh**. Introducing a character just to make me sadder, another character died. I was already sad. So, you're the reason I'm taking my daughter back home in a box. I know you're looking for someone to blame, but don't point the finger at the one guy giving you what you ask for. If you're looking for someone to blame Elizabeth, blame Marvel. They're the ones who decided to store her in the fridge. You're Nick Fury. It's the second episode, and I'm already tired of them using his name like a taunt. Several bombs exploded today at an annual celebration in Moscow. News position. It's basically the blood running through the story veins of Marvel. If only there were some other way to deliver narrative information. Alas. You know, I could have killed him if I wanted to. Fury? No, you couldn't. There's still four episodes left, so don't go bragging about shit that couldn't happen. Seems someone didn't get this just at a tire memo. Since they can shapeshift clothing, is this the equivalent of him telling Gravik he should smile more? Playing the man's game, using the man's fork and knife. Are there scroll eating utensils you'd prefer they use? Digging on fancy clothes and wine makes sense, but insulting the use of cutlery doesn't. Because now I'm just wondering if there's a scroll version of the spork. Is there, Marvel? Is there? Well, I quite like dogs. And they don't go out of their way to degrade and destroy their own habitat. I love my corgi to death, but Dolly Potton has destroyed three couches, two chairs, an entertainment unit, seven candles, and impressively, four vacuum cleaners to date. Bullsh**. Dogs don't degrade or destroy their own habitat. You'll note, Fury never gave you a timetable for his promise. And if there's no deadline, he could technically still keep it a decade from now. If you wanted a concrete deadline, you should have put that in ink, Gravik. Rookie mistake. Humans are doomed to self-destruction. Using this as an excuse to kill all humans feels like a cliche, but it may just be that he's confronting me with my go-to excuse whenever I feel too lazy to recycle. Did you ever stop and think about how incredibly lucky Gravik is that the Eternal stopped the Earth from being destroyed to give birth to a Celestial? The new Skrull homeworld would have been f otherwise f***ing eternals we need a single commander whose war power is total and unchecked what the sh is this prime minister about to pull a jar jar binks she is you never go full jar jar the council just voted him general maybe wait until your car gets here before calling gravik's opponent to rat him out i know he said you could go in peace but that won't stop amelia clark from mowing you down are they cheering him being named Scroll General? Because that news must have traveled super fast. Or are they cheering the successful terrorist attack? In which case, too soon. I was told this phase would be over. Afraid not, scientist lady. Before phase five is over, we still have to go through the Marvels, Deadpool 3, Captain America 4, whatever the f Thunderbolts is, and finding out if Blade ever gets made. Snooping, 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 snooping in plain sight. No one can see me for some reason. Snooping, not even crouch, just snooping. Super bright light, still no one sees me. The 27 EU heads of state plus the British Prime Minister have all but commanded Washington to account for itself. You see, this is what makes news positions so pointless. You could just begin the next scene with Rhodes being interrogated and we put all this information together. We didn't need the force feeding. Sometimes your audience is smart enough to put things together from context clues. So stop the unnecessary hand-holding in what's supposed to be my super spy MCU series. Uh, alleged, alleged presence, madam. This scene was a lot more fun in Iron Man 2, so here's a sin for making me miss Iron Man 2. Slovakia rolls its eyes at me one more time, I'm gonna put on the suit and carpet bomb it. Covering the mic and conveniently forgetting that people can still read lips. Also joking about war crimes. I was there trying to stop the attack. Oh, well, excellent job at that, by the way. 2,000 dead so far. It bears repeating just how badly Fury f this up. Not only did he fail to stop the attack, he also failed to stop them from getting the bomb in the first place and stopped a much more competent security agency from preventing the attack to begin with. There's putting Fury in a bad spot, and then there's completely neutering Fury's competency to the point we wonder how he was ever in charge in the first place. Maybe we should call our friends. 
No, 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 no. We can't jump the gun on that. Okay, but maybe call just one of them. Don't you know a blonde woman who has lots of experience with zooming around the galaxy and dealing with scrolls? We protect the planet by protecting our seat at the table. Oh, sh. The table? Was John Wick in the MCU this entire time? The reason we wrestled this power from mediocre men who don't look like us was not simply to turn around and hand it to mediocre men who do. Damn. I'm so happy Rhodey isn't just a one-off cameo in this like he was in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Don Cheadle is f***ing amazing in this scene with Jackson. And I can't help but feel the power being wrestled away from my mediocre YouTube narrator ass in the form of me removing a sin. <laughs> Unnecessary bone break. You've got his gun already. And he's in the UK, so it's gonna take him forever to get seen by a doctor. This series just feels like a reason for Samuel L. Jackson to indulge in his hat fetish. He wears a lot of different hats is all I'm saying. I'm Nick Fury. Stop that. Fury needs a nap, and apparently all these agents just quiet quitted capturing him. Where is your safe house? Torturing a guy in a meat locker cliche. Didn't your mother ever warn you you could lose an eye by beating your meat like that? We've got masturbation jokes, y'all. I've thrown everything at him and he hasn't said a word. Everything. He barely looks like someone shook him down for his lunch money. What are you doing in there? Waiting until you hear someone that should have been in your line of sight to do your alt-tabbing away from your covert MCU Easter egging. But everyone talks when their blood starts to cook at 160 degrees centigrade. Centigrade? I'm sorry, you're gonna have to put that in freedom units for me. My brain doesn't use communist measurements. You're waiting in the car. Keep the engine running. Is this why you brought Amelia Clark into this project? To sit outside meeting rooms and inside the car waiting? Because it seems like a waste of Daenerys Stormborn of the House Targaryen, the first of her name, Queen of the Andals and the First Man, Protector of the Seven Kingdoms, the Mother of Dragons, the Khaleesi of the Great Grassy, the Unburnt, the Breaker of Chains. Sausage Envy. If no one is going to hear this guy and all of these cans fall to the ground, I don't think you need to worry about the bell. Where the f*** is that hook thing she said across the door? Did the show forget it existed? I know Pagan has a gun, he just used it. Graphic has a weird handing people his gun for no reason fetish, and I am not here for it. Did they just leave him there? Isn't the Scrolls' whole plan predicated on people not knowing about Scrolls? So isn't a hiker coming across a random green alien in the middle of the woods concerning? Look, he's changing his hat again. We get it, your haberdashery game's on point. That's enough, Samuel. Aren't you forgetting something? Scene does not contain a Frozone asking his wife where the super suit is. Okay, this just makes me think of stuff like if you married a shapeshifter, is it wrong to make her shapeshift during sexy boom boom time? Shouldn't you just be super into her base form? And if you ask him to change who they look like, is that role play or are you giving them an inferiority complex? And what about asking them to shapeshift their uh, interdimensional portal? Would it be offensive to ask for a change of size or shape? Or what about location? Nope, sorry, uh, I'm done, just heard myself. This has been very sinful. How dare you make me think of these things, Marvel? Shame on you. One minute and eight seconds of previously awning and awning and awning and awning and nothing has happened in this show, so what do you think I've forgotten? Storing your deadly projectile launcher this close to your fleshy erectile launcher. Why did you join the resistance, Beto? Well, you see, sometimes shows like to bring in someone new to a situation as an expositional surrogate for the audience. Well, that was kind of done in episode one, so now I'm just kind of hanging around. Ooh, maybe I'll be part of an important mission this week in a completely unseen role. All faith is built on risk. Not so fast there, Screlly. You're forgetting about that pesky faith that's built on suppressing the masses through the fear of a judgmental and omnipotent higher power. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna hand these files to you in the most unnatural way possible so this camera and the attached audience can get a good look at them. Also, which genius put the classified stamp over the caution notice? There's so much room on this thing. Why stamp over one of the few bits of information you actually need? Time to change. No, I think the time to change would have been almost any time that wasn't as you're pulling up to the military base and are clearly visible to the surveillance cameras that are no doubt surrounding it. Time. In case you confused it with New York Cheesecake 1998. Scene of Nick Fury opening his umbrella really fast over and over is not immediately followed by a scared flock of birds that take down an airplane. We get it, Disney. You're really good at de-aging and you want to show it off. But I didn't need this flashback to justify that Nick Samuel L. Jackson Fury is a sexual being. This should put Dracoff's men on their heels. Wait, who's Dracoff? Okay, time for a quick googly Google. All right, General Dracoff, Marvel antagonist, introducing Black... <laughs> they made a Black Widow movie, didn't they? Oh, sh**. 
I totally forgot about that. Our unit doesn't exist, Fury. That means I don't work for you. That's an intriguing possibility. It's also a stupid loophole. If these guys want a date, then f***ing date. I promise your audience is even less concerned with Sha'eld rules on fraternization than trade disputes in the Star Wars prequels. In fact, I bet you'll be more concerned with how I just said Sha'eld. That, my friends, looks a hell of a lot like World War III. To how can you watch that poison? Even a broken clock's right twice a day. I don't know, Fury. What if a wild animal got a hold of said clock? Let's say, oh, I don't know, a fox? And what if this fox f***ed it up so bad that the poor clock doesn't have hands or numbers anymore and instead just spouts fear-mongering hateful rhetoric with no basis in fact? Or, you know, doesn't even tell time at all. Darling, you are Nick Fury. Stop using his name as a fear-inducing power noun. Stop it! I never harbored any illusions about the necessity of you going away. But staying away, that leaves a mark. Okay, but how long exactly does he have to be away before going away gets promoted to staying away? Actually, forget I ask. I'm feeling a sudden urge to stay away myself, so blip. Drinking orange juice immediately after taking a drink of coffee. You monster, what's next? Are you going to tell me Nick Fury brushes his teeth right before drinking his coffee in the morning? You came back in the blip. So glad we got this CGI meet cute instead of Fury's return from the blip. Seeing Fury suddenly rematerialize in the middle of New York City traffic would have been the perfect time for Marvel's second F-bomb. I'm a good liar. Well, she did convince Darth Maul that Beckett was at fault for Voss failing in his mission. I guess that counts. So here's a sin for Disney failing to give us a sequel to Solo, in which Amelia Clark might have been put to better use. Yes, that was a long walk, but I'm happy to take it. I'll see you tomorrow. Early. Oh, early, you say? Thanks for that, Gravik. For a minute, I was worried I'd have no clue when to be ready for this very important mission, but early clears that up entirely for me. It's remarkable, isn't it? Covert meeting in an art gallery cliche. <laughs> Were all the park benches, mysterious bridges, and empty churches booked by dead reckoning? I mean, look at the fat, smug smile on his face. Are we looking at the same painting? Or is that genuinely what constitutes as a smile in England? Choice between having my story told in ink and oil paint, or having it written in blood. I choose blood all day long. Yeah, but have you ever tried painting in blood? It's a nightmare. You can never get the right consistency. You have very few shades to work with. And I've just realized that he's being metaphorical and I may have drastically overshared. Thank you, love. Calling your server love or darling or sweetie or any other pet name. It's not cute or respectful. It's creepy and annoying. Almost as bad as leaving one of those Bible verse papers disguised to look like cash as a tip. Almost. You should be grateful that I haven't sent that back to you in a body bag yet. Cool moment, but what's the point of changing into Gravik? It doesn't make them better fighters or give any real distraction advantage since the real Gravik is at the table. Was it because you needed this shot for the trailer to get people to watch Secret Invasion? It was, wasn't it? Also, I'm assuming this brick container filled with priceless pieces of art has at least some kind of CCTV, so why are none of these numbskrolls worried about being exposed? Sudden ambush of alsos! The fact that Talos is startled by the appearance of multiple Kingsley Benadiers instead of aroused. Uh, I mean, amused. Yes, amused. Uh, anybody have a glass of water at hand? Uh, uh, I appear, I appear to be really thirsty. Ew. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Seriously, how do we live in a world where this makes it past the censors, but a classic Sam Jackson mother is off the table? Also trying to convince me that a butter knife is sharp enough for Gravik to cut his flesh with. Not only is this blade too dull to stab through Gravik's hand, but when he pulled it backward, the blade would have moved with it. In other words, if you're gonna steal from John Wick, don't. Also, also, please ignore any seeming correlation between the above sin and the earlier sin about painting with blood. This is a work of fiction. Any similarities to persons living or dead or actual events is purely coincidental. Series is halfway over and Amelia Clark has spent at least 66% of her screen time waiting in cars. Aha! Being the man of the world that I am, I have one English friend, and they informed me that Talos has carelessly exposed himself here by eating the worst part of the English breakfast first. The tomato is mostly decorative, but if you have to eat it, you do so last so that your final memory of that plate of grease was a marginally healthy one. Also, whichever animal decided this poor man deserved to have his toast with extra carcinogen sprinkles. Also, also, where's the black pudding? And the beans? And the sausage? And what maniac has a Coke with a full English? This is an outrage. What an absolute bunch of co- Whoa, whoa, whoa. I am not reading that. Okay, maybe it was a mistake to let my English friends send this entire scene. Help me, Talos, because I am useless without you.
Full disclosure, everyone, I may have focused too much on the breakfast sins because I have no idea why Fury is no longer mad at Talos. What was that? You actually did pay attention and you're wondering the same thing? <laughs> Sweet. Back to the breakfast sins then. Using far too much imaginary currency to pay for your disappointing breakfast. I mean, just name me one other interspecies relationship where it's acceptable to clean up the other guy's poop. Peace lily and a betta fish. Plant feeds off the fish waste and cleans the water. Fish eats the plant roots. Any other questions, Talos? I mean, every time you were promoted inside S.H.I.E.L.D., we did that. Every terror attack you prevented, we did that. Every... Talos does that for all the some time. I mean, did that for all of the some time. I mean... This does this, that we did that thing, he does it. Look, this scene goes on for a bit, okay? You got any more abuse you want to hurl my way? Mistaking the truth for abuse. So I just left you. Why did Talos turn back into his human form? What's the point of being able to look like anyone you want if you just pick one identity for these secret missions? Fury kills the guard on sight, which is totally cool because he's a scroll and f those refugees, am I right? But did Fury know that for certain? If not, then he just murdered a British officer who was literally just doing their job and post-1777, that's rather frowned upon. Kids. Covert communication devices that have bright lights. Makes sense if you want to spoon feed the audience how you're speaking to your buddy. Makes less sense if you're practicing top tier spycraft. Nobody calls me Nick Bob. Technically everyone calls you Nick. Every person who's ever referred to you by your full name has called you Nick. They just use your surname immediately after it. Also, I haven't rechecked the whole MCU, but I guarantee that he's been called just Nick. I'm even willing to bet it'll happen this series. This is not a negotiation, Bob. It is, because you're going to counter his offer by releasing his kid after Bob releases Talos. It's not not a negotiation just because one side has more to negotiate with. What you working on over there? Bob. The implication here is that a military commander can track the position of a submarine carrying nuclear missiles from a home computer, and I'm just gonna go ahead and call bull scroll on this whole thing. I hope. I could protect you. You couldn't protect yourself coming through that door. Bob would be excellent at Talos sins. Why don't you shapeshift back into this piece of trash and call in on a board on that missile strike? Maybe because he's the only one who knows the code word. Making Fury as dumb as the audience so that we'll understand the plan, but accidentally making him dumber than the audience, who clearly figured out it wouldn't be as easy as this through context clues. Also, if Fury really thought stopping the missile was as simple as Talos making a phone call, why was he bothering to interrogate Bob in the first place? I want to talk to CENTCOM. These are CENTCOM's orders. With you obey, or you'll be removed. Okay, so the launch of this missile will require both of these guys to scan their key cards and flick some switches. So why didn't Gravik replace this clearly hesitant officer as well as this first guy? Having said that, did he need to replace either of them? If the orders are coming from Commodore Bob, then wouldn't they be followed regardless? Enough of this bull bullshots. Also, continually preventing Samuel L. Jackson from cursing. I've just about had it with this monkey fighting censorship on this Monday through Friday show. I'm giving you three seconds to give me that code or I'm going to aim higher or, or, or maybe lower. Does that threat really carry as much weight on a scroll? We've seen them change their shape and even mass, so couldn't they just temporarily relocate their dangly bits? You can't even keep your daughter's loyalty. Talos is all about pacifism until somebody mentions his daughter and then he goes all Marty McFly, don't call me chicken or Batman, why did you say that name? Or Will Smith at the Oscars. I'm not really sure why, considering his alternate course of action after killing this guy, ironically puts his daughter at extreme risk. Hang on, that shot wouldn't instantly kill a human. Is that where a scroll's vital point is? And that raises another question. When a scroll shapeshifts into a human externally, do all their vital organs stay in the same place on the inside? Damn it, Marvel, you're creating more questions than answers again. This guard is one of the worst guards to ever guard. And instead of coming up with a clever way to beat this man while he's down, we'll just let his work speak for itself. Having this many memories about soccer, that's just sad, England. Bob. I mean, that's just sad, Bob. Abort. Exercise. Code word? Zachary. Fortunately for planet Earth, the Commodore's password was essentially password. All right, so make me understand. I'm not with Gravik, because I'm with you. Roses are red, violets are blue. May I offer you a meaningless platitude or two? I hear the first thing they teach you at motorcycle school is to immediately hit the deck at the first sign of any oncoming headlights. It's really the safest thing to do. Are you a leader of scrolls? Or a worst enemy? 
Rough way to go, but still beats her Game of Thrones arc. What? If you think she's dead, why bother driving around the body? What possible reason could you have for swerving like this? Ooh, safety deposit box, mysterious gun, ominous phone call. What could it all mean? Spy sh is happening. Do I dare ask what calamity must have transpired to bring you home? To me. Do I dare ask why this series keeps telling us and showing us that big things are happening, but everything feels so small and unimportant? Super scrolls. Any chance I could super skip these previously on segments every week? Run. This is not running. This is writing. Just gonna go ahead and start my countdown timer for when Guy inevitably comes back to life. And go. <laughs> Called it. You know, for a spy show, this has been remarkably predictable. Also, man, Khaleesi had it easy. When her boyfriend slash murderer died, we had to wait an entire year to figure out if he'd come back to life. And now I'm remembering season eight of Game of Thrones, so here's two extra cents for that. An episode of a television show set in 2012 does not contain a John Cusack. Episode believes we need to see every single step Nick Fury takes in this restaurant to get to the spot where he can hang his coat. And we do not. As I was watching all the news coverage of those guys' heroics over in the States, Strangest thing. Thinking that putting your newspaper articles in French will keep our American-speaking writers from finding a way to sin it. <laughs> but you overlooked a key sin, which is the French language. Because if he's the man I think he is, he has a powerful sense of righteousness. I don't know if a righteous man would remake Hydrotech to be used in his own organization, but what do I know? I'm just the narrator for a YouTube channel dedicated to sin. Righteousness is a little scarce around our office. Good book. It's a collection of poems. So, no? Raymond Carver. You familiar? Nah, more of a history guy myself. Thinking that literature written in the past is not part of history. He's known for his brevity. <laughs> yeah, all three hours and eight minutes of the very talky shortcuts would very much like to enter this chat. And what did you want? To call myself beloved. Roll commercials. Fury was fired a couple of days ago. Speaking during any kind of fine arts performance. Those choir kids have likely rehearsed for months for this one concert. Wait until intermission to talk to your neighbor. Did they not have performance etiquette on Skrullos before it was destroyed? I DDT'd that dude from the top rope. Yeah, it was like Undertaker level. DDT was actually a move created by one Mr. Jake the Snake Roberts. Undertaker did become famous for the Tombstone Pile Driver, which honestly would have been more fitting to use for your bullshit wrestling metaphor, Rody. Now you enjoy this concert. Leaving before intermission, which is yet another violation of concert etiquette. I've already taken care of her. Did you though? Did you not notice her body missing the next time you left the compound? This is why you double tap Gravik. I should never, ever have forced you into this and I am so sorry. The thing Amelia Clark's agent said to her after watching the series somehow made it into the episode. And we have a big bargaining chip. Do you though? Wouldn't the bargaining chip be taking this danger to the president and saying you're the only one who can fix it? If you've already stopped the crisis, you're dispensable. The president doesn't need you anymore and you've lost your leverage. We just keep contributing. Show them our hearts. They will see us. <laughs> oh, wait, he's serious. <laughs> Delusional. Gaia would be scrolltastic at TV sins. Oh, I get it, because everyone in the series is wearing a mask. Subtle Marvel. But I won't send you for that. What I will send you for is making this lack of subtlety into f***ing creepy home decor. Nobody would willingly hang this sh on their walls. Nobody! Uh, by far and away, the greatest mistake. Are you including that time you held an agitated alien cat up to your face and lost an eye? Don't do that, Nick. Hey, remember that scene in Captain Marvel where Nick Fury said even his wife and kids would call him Fury? Guess that was a lie. So here's a sin for lying. That I would never hurt you. Well, that was an unrealistic promise even for someone planning to kill their eventual husband. Nobody goes an entire relationship without hurting their partner, even accidentally. Part of having a relationship is acknowledging when you f*** up, apologizing, and learning to move past it together. I'm starting to think Skrulls don't watch Dr. Phil. And what did you want? To call myself beloved. Callbacks to events that happened less than 12 minutes ago. I'm not sure if this means we should get divorced or we should renew our vows. Nick Fury clearly went to the Raylan Given School of Relationships. They'll be coming for you. I'm a big girl. I could take care of myself. 
Yeah, because why would Fury want her to come with him and they could help each other stay alive? I mean, that's just silly, right? <sighs> I honestly can't figure out if this is supposed to be a surprise for the audience or not. We've already seen the Skrull impersonating Rhodey talk to Priscilla in the church. Learn how to actually surprise people before you just start going willy-nilly with twists in your episode. That's all I ask. Well, that and to make a show that is actually more interesting than this one. Memory serves I sh canned you into oblivion a few days ago. Firing someone doesn't prevent them from randomly reappearing in your life, dude. When Jeremy fired me, I stalked him relentlessly until he agreed to start TV Sins and let me narrate it just to leave him alone. We. Oui. I wanted to share my favorite liquid lunch with you. Liquid lunches. They just scrolls. I, 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 I don't think you can successfully gaslight Nick Fury twice. Eventually he's gonna catch on. He ain't stupid. Aside from that cat scratch thing, I mean. I guess maybe I could buy that Rhodey was able to keep this footage out of anyone's hands, but there were several people at this fight and presumably more than one person who would have witnessed what appeared to be Nick Fury committing murder. So the idea that this incident has not already leaked outside of this room is a lot of bullshit. Is that really what you're gonna go with? At your trial? Seems like it'd be pretty easy to prove. Just introduce Talos as evidence. Hell, we literally had a shapeshifter impersonating a judge in She-Hulk. Did you forget that? I mean, I know some people try to forget that show. Before I have you defenestrated. Making your audience Google defenestrate instead of just saying toss you out a window. Aw oh, man, looks like Gravik used those missiles that only make vehicles flip over instead of blowing up. Tough break, my man. Oh well, you'll remember that for next time, I'm sure. Villains pull up in matching black vans, so we know that they're villains cliche. If you have these abilities, why wouldn't you lead with them instead of firing guns? Why did Gravik change back to his other human form after being shot instead of reverting to his scroll form like Talos did? Did Gravik give himself the superpower of convenience? Oh no, not Talos. Yeah, I don't give a sh so, do you have clearance? Does he have... What kind of a stupid question is that? And why is a doctor in a hospital asking it? We know Fury had his clearance revoked, but you know Nick Fury is the public figure who led the Avengers and saved the world multiple times, and he quite literally brought you the President of the United States. Why the f*** are you asking about clearance? And how would... You know what? I'm at my limit for questions. Just take the three sins and we'll move on. It's gonna be real awkward later when Nigel gets wheeled in for his routine colonoscopy. How'd he get off that sub so easily? You'd think almost starting World War III would at least get you held after class. How come we never see Gravik in his normal form when he's in New Skrullos? I thought his whole selling point of the camp is everyone gets to wear their natural skin. Doesn't your leader refusing to do the same kind of defeat that selling point? But what we know is our war is yet to be set in motion. Didn't you just say in the last episode that you were starting your war? Does the war automatically get negated if you fail to kill your target? Were there conditions to the war actually beginning? Are your rules for war based on Calvin Ball? Wow, Secret Invasion clearly graduated from the Godzilla King of the Monsters school for hiding shitty special effects in the dark. Glad to see COVID didn't get the school shut down. I know it was hard on enrollments. Shouldn't he have some blood on his hand here? Or does shapeshifting make it all go away or get absorbed inside of him? The former's too convenient, and the latter is... Ew. Show him satellite footage of new Skrullos. Do you think that maybe this is a conversation you should be having in a private space? You're still out in the open, and I'm pretty sure one of your soldiers just gave you I'm gonna stage a revolt eyes. No. This is Leverage, Rava. No, this is Secret Invasion. Leverage is a much better series. One that actually has more than six episodes in a season, so you can have neat things like character development and narrative arcs. Where's the president? <laughs> damn people just giving out classified information. Asking a question, getting an answer, and then insulting the person who gave it to you. Also, why wasn't this guy sent home? That tells you a lot that even Secret Service agents can't get a sick day, even when they're having issues with both the secret and the service. Though, well, I guess he could still block a bullet. The footage of you killing Maria Hill is gonna lead off every news program all across the hemisphere. How do you know that, though? I can see you timing the data to be sent to journalists, but once they have the video, most news outlets will want some time to analyze and vet the footage, contact experts, and so forth. And they'll all do that at different rates of speed, depending on the resources, so you can't really know they'll lead off simultaneously. All that to say, your threat is dumb, Rhodes. It would have been easier just to say the video will be sent to every news outlet in 60 seconds. Now, all of a sudden, there's an appropriate amount of agents at the hospital. They really could have sent that injured guy home. Consider this a preview, Nick. But why are you letting him go? I know you can't kill him because he knows where the harvest is and blah, blah, blah. But why not capture him and hold him for interrogation? Letting him go makes no strategic sense whatsoever. Other than the fact that you still have an episode left in the series. Politely asking the location of Dr. Rosa Dalton. Thinking that just because you have a chipper British accent, you can point a gun at someone and it's still somehow polite. Hey, look at that! You shot him and he changed back into his green skin. Somebody should tell Nick this so he can prove Rhodey is a scroll. I've tried, but I'm starting to think he doesn't actually watch this channel. 
What are you confused about? Why some scrolls have human accents, even when they're among their own kind and no longer need accents to blend in. Oh, you were asking Pedo. Uh, never mind. Carry on. Why the f are you punching him? Did none of you grab a gun? Were you just hoping that a mild beatdown would be enough to get this man planning mass murder to surrender? This rebellion is dumb. Also, why did they waste time putting him on a table? Are tables his kryptonite? Come on, man. Gravik isn't John Cena. There's no way that fireman's carry has got you out for the count. What's it? Ah! I know I'm supposed to be focused on Chadfic, but I can't stop trying to figure out how that door works behind him. Is it supposed to be a swinging door? The doors don't move one inch when Beto gets thrown through them, but they swing open and shut afterward. Set designer needs to learn how to door. And yes, I did just use door as a verb. If you'd like to file a complaint, you can mail it to our TV Sins office at 1060 West Addison Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60613. He died on a foreign planet. On a foreign road. Not to be confused with dying on a foreigner road. I hear bodies that drop there are cold as ice. Talos told me how you survived your execution. Yeah, she used the classic survival tactic, a montage. Colobsidian flora colossus. Oh, stop being pretentious. Just say Groot. He stole Groot DNA. We all know what a Groot is. Oh, sh I'll be in touch. How do you know these police lights and sirens are for you? Couldn't it just be a routine traffic ticket? If the government was coming for you, don't you think they'd send agents to quietly approach like they did for Bucky's arrest in Civil War? Don't worry about me. I'll put on a good face. Fury doesn't groan here, but he wanted to, so I'll groan twice as loud for him. Ugh. You don't need to show him slip away from the police. It's way less cool. You wouldn't show Batman slip away from Commissioner Gordon, would you? Who are you? Who, 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 I really gotta know. Now my name's Victor. No, of course you are. Nigel's the one with his silencer pressed against the base of your skull. Ooh, there he is. <laughs> okay, this series may be slow and dull at times, but Olivia Coleman is nothing less than a delight. Fine, take us in off from my favorite British person in the MCU. Sorry, Peggy. Dude, even with an accelerant, that building went up quick. It must be made out of that same wood at the church that Ellie fought that pervert minister in in Last of Us. The males in my species are very similar. If they're not busy gaslighting you, they're threatening you with murder. That's what all the podcasts are about. Not reacting at all to someone magicking a gun and drawing on you. I like to think he was too busy thinking of his favorite episode of My Favorite Murder. Also, I know Fury is the main character here, but I'll be damned if Sonya isn't the one actually being a super cagey, lethal super spy. Olivia Coleman is great, but I wanted this from Samuel L. too. How exactly did you get Talos' body back from the Secret Service? Did they just leave him there beside the road? I feel like that's a pretty big detail for the show to gloss over. How you feeling, Mr. President? Helpless. You may be feeling helpless, but considering the doctor said, I'll crack his chest, you take the laparotomy. I'd say you look pretty good for a man who just had his chest cracked in a laparotomy. What you see on the screen is the scroll compound. You just walked into the room with that tablet. How the f did you get it hooked up on that television so quickly? It takes me three flips in a handstand just to get my Chromecast to work with my phone. A strike on Russian soil. That means World War III. I would rather us face a war than extinction oh and what's nuclear winter a walk in the park i'd like this joke more if i could literally walk in a park right now without melting i thought you were a step ahead of me no you told him he'd like to think that fury never said he actually was how did the show manage to turn kingsley benadir into a terrible villain I feel a lot better if we were on the helicarrier yeah that's been mothballed that's a funny way of saying the special effects team was rushed and under budgeted and yet you decided to obey the order that says you have to wait around here for your execution the thing is, I love this house. Oh, cool. They had Darwin Awards on Scrollos too? When it comes to facing down my executioners, I'd rather meet the bastards standing right here in my happiness than to meet them running down some dark alley. But no one cares about getting bloodstains out of alleyways. That's what they're there for. Also, sure was cool of the assassins to wait until the most dramatic time in Vara's conversation before taking their first shot. Stealing the backpack body shield Mr. Nobody used in John Wick Chapter 4. Huh. These top words translate to Red Notice and Finish. That's a Ryan Reynolds movie. And Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. Oh, it's an Easter egg. Did I solve the riddle? Tell me what I've won. Man, keep the wig. Maybe you'll need it again. How much does it even weigh? It's a wig. And yes, I pick up everything in RPGs, and no, I never use any of my potions, just on the off chance I may need them. You're right. I am very good at video games. This is what we're doing? Having the audacity to question Sonya's taste in hip-hop. 
Would I have known by looking at these trees if Nick Fury was instead 293 kilometers from the Russian border or 295 kilometers from the Russian border? Of course not. Now, if they'd specified this was 183 miles from the Russian border, I'd have known. My brain only reads freedom units, Marvel. Last I checked, Rhodey is a scroll. What? <laughs> and you said I'd lost my touch. Well, you haven't lost your touch from pointlessly keeping secrets from your allies. In the aftermath, some were sent in to collect that DNA. That's a cool theory, but in practice, how would you tell Carol Danvers' blood on the ground from any other Avenger's blood? Isn't it all mostly red? Wouldn't you need to already have some of her DNA to compare it to and know Gravit got the right sample? None of this tracks. Why do you think I came back? This sin isn't fair, unlike all the other ones here, which are totally super legit and completely objective. But don't you just hate it when you open a door too far and then it rebounds and tries to close itself again, which is exactly what happens to Fury here. I hate it. They really should have reshot this entire scene. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where did that hat come from, Samuel L? Is this a continuity error or even worse? Did your character put on a hat off screen? <gasps> come to think of it, this episode has been completely bereft of hat changes. Fury, why haven't you called any of your special friends down? This is personal. We can't keep depending on these superheroes to swoop in and save our asses. Don't you decide that for me. For the record, if any superheroes are watching this, feel free to save the shit out of me. This is personal. Well, that's a funny way of saying we can't afford them. They do say Darwin never sleeps. Let's give our extinction a nice leg up. I already made a Darwin joke, and I'm not changing it now just because she made a Darwin joke. It's her fault you're getting two Darwin jokes. Blame her. There it is. I'm sure his contract requires at least one hat switch an episode, even if it's switching from one knit hat to another knit hat. Samuel L. has got to get his fix. I'm taking a sin away because this pose is the coolest thing he's done in this entire series. And then I'm adding a sin back because this pose is the coolest thing he's done in this entire series. And yes, I know he shot down a helicopter, but helicopters ain't sh Let's finish this. Yes, please. Kind of bored out of my scroll. So I guess we're just using previously in this show? Previously to what? To this episode? To the moment I'm watching it? To a time when Marvel gave a sh about their shows and actually put any effort into them? Also a full 70 seconds of recapping the first five episodes of this show that should have been a much better first 60 minutes of a movie. I've decided scroll blood is way too purple. Instead of this looking gruesome, it just looks like someone's kid found the finger paints. I have dialed this number a million times. This is just the first time I press send. Except you don't press send to ring another phone. You push call. And you might think that's pedantic and ridiculous, but I'd remind you this is TV sins. There is nothing too shallow for us to add to Cindy's counter. We'll send anything. The only thing we can't send legally is Traverse City, Michigan, and that's only because we signed a treaty in exchange for their cherries. Everything else is fair game. We're going to find out in a second not Nick Fury exited this car after lining up the straight shot for the vehicle to act as a decoy. My question is, how did he escape the car without these two guards spotting him? They're clearly looking right at the vehicle from 50 feet away. Did he use that ridiculous tunnel laser from Winter Soldier again? Making your main AI prompt for these credits, how about a bunch of green blobs and make sure it goes on for at least two full minutes because there's nothing a modern audience loves more than sitting through two minutes of green stuff. President Vladimov has strenuously denied responsibility. Naming your fictional Russian President Vladimov. If you want to make him Putin, do it. But this middle-of-the-road tee-hee bullshit is annoying. Oh, he strenuously denied it. Then I guess we're all right then. I mean, it's no more ridiculous than how over-the-top and pushy you're being about attacking Russia. This is the pot calling the kettle strenuous. Did you take a stupid pill with your breakfast this morning, Admiral? I guess now that the show knows that we know that Rhodey's a scrawl, all guardrails are off on his villainy. The problem is the show didn't know that we knew what they thought we didn't know long before they wanted us to know it, you know? And it's the Russians, 100%. While I'm glad we've moved away from the ludicrous 1,000% nonsense, the scourge of the 100% is still very real. Please be advised, there are very few situations where humans should have 100% certainty about something. Your help in ending this disease is welcome. Oh, sh**. You know your finale's boring when one of the villains can't even stay awake. This wasn't even scripted. I heard Don Cheadle actually fell asleep during filming, and because they were short on time, they just left it in. Poor dude. Now I'm scared for Armor Wars. Fury? Why are we concerned about Fury? We got enough security for him. This is a valid point. And the idea that cocky Fody would in any way panic about old man Fury, a person whose strength he has scoffed at this entire series, is ludicrous. 100%. To the last stand of the great Nick Fury. Show's over-optimistic tagline somehow makes it into the final episode. Fury, tell me you got a backup plan. Your Avengers on standby.
Are you kidding? With a $212 million budget for six measly episodes, I hope this finale has at least a few Avengers on standby. What else would the money even go toward? What about that invisible cloak and shield? <laughs> um, actually, Gravik, the show was called Cloak and Dagger, but I don't blame you for getting the title wrong. Nobody remembers that series. You too busy playing dress up. <coughs> Using my skin like a costume. Show again hints at what could have been an incredible exploration of appropriation in the black experience, and again fails to even give a moment to the deeper questions the audience might be asking. Why find any nuance or depth when you can stop at keeping things skin deep? He turned the war people into a band of beggars, and what I'm supposed to emulate that? I'm supposed to be like Talos and put my trust in you, you pimped us, Fury! Possibly the greatest sin of this series is wasting this incredible Kingsley Benadir performance. It's haunting, captivating, and powerful, and is languishing in a show that is anything but. Also, Olivia Coleman, You wasted her too, you marvelous morons. Also, also, Gravik sure does seem to have a lot of rage build up for Fury. I mean, he really hates the guy. Good thing the show rushed through its story in typical Marvel Disney Plus fashion, so the audience didn't get any time to see Gravik coming to hate Fury or having tiny pieces of his heart torn out with every kill. Yep, six episodes was plenty. You, you're right, I, I failed you. I failed you. This whole speech might have had a chance of being very meaningful if it was actually Fury saying it. But because the show needs its big twist, we never get any kind of deep exploration of how Fury really feels about his role in all of this. Somewhere in a nuclear facility, Marvel has a genuinely interesting and nuanced take on this topic, hooked up to a machine so that this show can be a pale imitation of it. Because it's easier to save the lives of 8 billion people than it is to change their hearts and minds. Huh, I see once again we're playing the Earthlings can't handle an alien species inhabiting their planet bit, so I'll once again remind you that new Asgard exists. You know, the last thing I felt before I flaked off. No, I don't. And neither do you. What the f*** is up with the lights flashing as these agents are shot? Is the shooter standing right next to the light switch panel with a gun in their hand? What exactly does making the hallway dark for an entire second accomplish? Was the shooter running low on darts and hoping to induce a seizure? Is that what I think it is? Do you think it's all the Avengers DNA in a convenient suppository form? Because that's what I thought it was. I think the radiation's eaten your brains, mate. Right? Because how could he think he has any leverage? And why would he even bring it with him if he wanted to make a safe trade? And how could he even guarantee that you would follow through on getting off the planet? It's almost like you should have known this was a setup by this point. If confidential strike orders have to travel and be transferred hand to hand to be executed, then I all of a sudden have a severe distrust in our government's ability to execute anything quickly. It's like military protocol was designed to create false plot tension or something. Oh, bullshit. You didn't hook that vial up to anything. You just stuck it in your little microwave with tubes inside. This cannot be how a DNA reader works. Also, how is your little computer able to identify all of this DNA if you didn't already have known samples to compare them to? How is the computer programmed to recognize the DNA of Thanos' henchman, Ebony Maw? Even if you somehow collected his blood, there's no way you'd be able to identify it. The harvest is just a dumb idea altogether with more holes in it than the beer can I shoot my BB gun at every weekend. So here's, let's just say 30 sins. Okay, you can move him in here. Clearing a room, but missing the British lady behind the door in the bright pink overcoat. No checking behind the doors. You really are a scroll. How does not checking behind doors make him a scroll? Is that a well-known and publicized Marvel fact that scrolls never check behind doors? <laughs> surprise twist! Not shown. Surprise. You're flailing. You're weak. And I've got a Drax arm, because that makes total sense. Also, why did Gaia get his sleeve tattoos? Those weren't part of his DNA. They were added to commemorate important moments in his life. So why does the Mother of Dragons have them? This climax makes no sense. Also, title of my sex tape. This whole he's the real villain shoot him cliche goes on for all the some time. The show has already established they could just shoot Rhodey in the arm and he changed back, proving he's a scroll. It's remarkable how you can just rush through an entire series and then have so little to put in your finale. I'm almost impressed. Almost. I think Marvel expects us to all be furiously fansturbating over all of these combined powers, but I'm over here thinking, you can go Hulk or Captain Marvel and you thought an ebony maw paw was ever the right move? This 10 second shot of a missile silo opening for a missile we all know will never be launched helped nudge this final episode over 30 minutes. Great work. Much excitement. Sir, you're looking at your enemy. Actually, Nick, the president is clearly looking at you in this next shot. Unless you're implying you really are his enemy. 
these two finally decide to go Captain Marvel at the same time. Because as if this same versus same finale wasn't enough on its own, Marvel's now made it several little same versus sames within one larger scale same versus same. It's like a never ending Marvel trosk of Russian nesting drolls. <laughs> She went from zero to full mantis so fast. Does just having the DNA cocktail give you the expertise to even use the powers you might have? Like, you can give me the DNA of Jordan, and I might get taller, but I'm not dunking from the free throw line 30 seconds later. Now that I think about it, this show basically steals its plot from Space Jam, and that explains a lot. Sure, I'm glad we gave Amelia Clark Captain Marvel's powers rather than just, you know, bringing in Captain Marvel, the Skrull expert. <laughs> really dodged a bullet there. I have all these powers and I choose uppercut, leg chop, neck grab. And there you go. Gaia is now the most OP Marvel character to ever OP. I'm sure the shows and movies will now wrestle with that in ways that completely make sense. Show wants me to believe the President of the United States can cancel a nuclear strike while calling from an unknown British cell phone. Show should be prepared for disappointment, just like I was going into this finale. How long have you been in here? Asking a question that the person you're asking it to would have no way to answer, and that the show you're on has no interest in revealing yet. Also, it appears Rhodes is wearing a hospital gown, which probably means he's been a scroll since after his Civil War injuries. And if you think I'm not giving a handful of preemptive sins for the roadie that was at Stark's funeral being a scroll, you have failed to grasp how seriously I take my responsibilities here. This dumb, way too curvy intersection. That is why tonight I'm presenting to Congress for immediate emergency authorization a bill that designates all off world born species enemy combatants. <laughs> Man, those poor guys in New Asgard are fed. The Skrulls lost one home, but the Asgardians are apparently about to lose home number two. We know who you are. We know how to find you. And we will kill every last one of you. Presidents. I love you. Skrull. Yes, well, let's be sure not to repeat the mistakes of Talos and Fury. Wait, who? Talos. Talos? Did you just pronounce both of those syllables wrong? Isn't it Talos? Just because you're British doesn't mean you get to waltz in here with your hoity-toity queen speech and change how names are pronounced. Although, I guess I should be thanking you. Because now that the show itself can't even agree on how a name is pronounced, that'll keep people in the comments from saying I'm saying things wrong. <laughs> uh, what a world that would be. And leave love and friendship out of this. Cutting off my Gaia Fallsworth fanfic efforts before they'd even begun. I will use you. And you will use me. Immediately encouraging my Gaia Fallsworth fanfic efforts after you just thwarted them. Sci-fi property ends with a person discovering a warehouse full of clones slash androids slash hosts. Cliché. Give me a break. There's only one way this ends. Is it with Mulder and Scully showing up? Because that's the only way you're getting any sins back on this episode. If you truly care about the scrolls, get them off my planet. But it's not your planet? Britson's just the president of the U.S., right? Or is it more like a Nixon Futurama situation? Good news from Saber. The Kree said they're open to peace talks with the Skrulls. First, since we don't know what Saber stands for yet, we can't officially know how to say it and if Fury is pronouncing it correctly. So here's a sin for withholding that information. And second, the Krees are open to peace talks? Man, with that information, it almost makes this entire series completely disposable. I mean, if the show hadn't done a good enough job at that on its own. Also, how did that work with the blip? Was the war suspended as half the Kree in the universe disappeared? And when they came back, did the war start again? I have so many questions. And I'd love to do more research on this, but I'm already in my pajamas. That I love you. As I am. Only as you are. Although, now that I think about it, maybe back to the uh, human teeth during makeout sessions and other mouth-related activities? I've let people down, let myself down. Then where is Fury? He's on Saber! Who was in his tight? I need an extract fast. Vanilla or strawberry? Your dreams are about to come true. Take his face way off. Off, 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 off. Skrulls have infiltrated the ranks of major world powers. Where is the proof? Yorkshire pudding. I'm considered good looking amongst my kind. Of. It's a weird flex, but sure. Fury's in town, G. Not G! I'm sorry, I, I do not know this term. Dirty bum. English, motherfucker, do you speak it? Oh, no. Loser. I'm an American. I'm an American. I don't care. 
but he won't even tell me where on planet Earth my daughter was killed. So apparently facts are not included in the debt I'm owed. You're playing each piece like losing it hurts. This ain't checkers. We need a single commander whose war power is total and unchecked. Lisa propose. Uh, alleged. Alleged, Fluffy. And you wonder why you're out. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. You're wasting your time. I'll never talk to you. Look at me! Look at me! How dare you close your eyes! I sent three operatives to infiltrate the Royal Navy. Not the Navy! There's a rule that, you know, commander station and operatives cannot be... Why do we feel it's necessary to yak about bullshit? In order to be comfortable. I don't know. If you get back to Earth and you see a man, say in his late 50s, taking a hard, long look across a crowded room. Your father called for a parley. That's the one. Parley! Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. I live in this world. You live in a psycho bunker where 9-11 was an inside job and, and the government are all Nazis. The government are all Nazis! <laughs> I was wondering what would break first, your spirit or your body. What you stop for? My name is Zeus. Zeus? Yeah, Zeus, as in father of Apollo, Mount Olympus. Don't f with me or I'll shove a lightning bolt up your ass. Zeus! Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that. I think we should call it your grave. Uh, curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. Oh, no God. Oh, God. What's in the f***ing box? Is it safe? I was catching a bullet today. You don't get to joke. Not today. I just took a bullet for you. And what did you want? To call myself beloved. I like turtles. That's bad. And that's you. And everyone knows when you make an assumption, you make an ass out of you and umption. Liquid location tracker. Microchips in your bloodstream. Allows us to track your movements in the field. Hope you had a restful flight. Weird Al Yankovic is on the plane. Did you uh, pre-game for our bilateral with the Russians or the half a bottle of bourbon? I'm not drunk. Wait, I am drunk. Oh my god, the quarterback is toast. And it's the Russians, 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 